Well, it is my privilege uh, to introduce my friend, my colleague, and my predecessor at Biblical Seminary, Dr. David Dunbar. Now, Dave's life has been deeply intertwined with that of BTS. He is, as it were, a native son. Dave was in the very first graduating class at BTS. I'm not going to say when that was. Long time ago. He received his MDiv, and then he went on to get his PhD from Drew University. He taught at Northeastern College, and then he served at Trinity Evangelical Divinity School right outside of Chicago. I'm not sure if Dave knows this or not, but it was my wife, Carolyn, who discovered what we sometimes called in our household, Missional Dave. You see, Carolyn came across his missional journal and began reading it, and in our home we would discuss what did missional Dave say today. What we discovered is that we loved what he said. We had similar thoughts, similar instincts, and he nurtured, unbeknownst to him, our own missional vision. We didn't have a label for how we were thinking, but, but Dave gave clarity to us as we thought about who we were and what our calling was. I will always be grateful for my friend, my colleague, and my predecessor, Dave Dunbar. Please give a warm welcome to Dr. Dave Dunbar. Well, I want to suggest to you this morning, uh, my friends, students, that is that graduation is not all it's cracked up to be. It may not even be a good idea. Instead, I want to propose that you stay in school and pay attention and continue your learning. In fact, thinking that you are ready to graduate may be the worst possible thing you can do. And that's what I'd like to uh, focus on today. Here's the issue. People who have received some measure of professional training for ministry, who have met the basic requirements of an academic program, and who have moved into positions of ministry responsibility, easily make the mistake of thinking that they are ready. They have the requisite tools, they have developed some basic skills, and they have vision and passion for the work of the Lord. Are they not the very kind of people that God has been waiting breathlessly to deploy in the great kingdom harvest? Well, perhaps they are, and perhaps you are but probably not. More likely, they have been taught but not yet formed in such a way that God can use them for maximum impact. In his book, Replenish, Leading from a Healthy Soul, Lance Witt writes, I quote, we all have a front stage and a backstage life. Front stage is the public world of ministry but we also have a backstage life, and the two are connected. If we neglect the backstage, the front stage will fall apart. He goes on to say that the front stage is about what you do, whereas the backstage is about who you are and who you are becoming. The backstage is arguably the most important thing about us, but it is also what is most difficult to address in a program of ministerial preparation, and what easily gets neglected in the busyness of ministry. You will find in ministry that there are people who think that burden giving is their spiritual gift. 
and they will try to exercise that gift on you. Paul Tripp comments on the dangerous burden created by unrealistic expectations of church members. He says the biggest problem is that many churches simply don't expect their pastor to struggle with sin. They don't expect him to get discouraged in the middle of the war for the gospel. They do expect that he will be able to joyfully carry an unrealistic job description that would overwhelm anyone this side of Jesus' return. In contrast to this, Jesus offers us the easy or the pleasant yoke and the light burden. He says that his yoke, it is his yoke and his burden. It is still a yoke because his teaching calls us to submission, to radical obedience, to a righteousness greater than that practiced or demanded by the scribes and Pharisees. It is still a burden because we are called to love God with all our heart and soul and mind and strength and our neighbors as ourselves. Yes, apprenticeship to Jesus is demanding. Dietrich Bonhoeffer says it well, when Jesus calls a man, he bids him come and die. So how can Jesus say easy and light? We find ourselves in the midst of the gospel paradox. The yoke of Jesus, like his cross, is a burden. It will in some way cost us our very lives. But in the midst of death, there is life. The overflowing life of the soul that walks with Christ and suffers with Christ and lives with Christ. It is the with Christ that makes all the difference. Jesus says that those who come to him for the easy yoke come as students. Take my yoke and learn from me. They come to enroll in what our church has begun to call the School of the Messiah. It is the School of the Messiah because Jesus is the professor. And it is the school of the Messiah because he himself is the curriculum. As Paul says to the Ephesians, they have learned the Christ. Our Lord is both teacher and textbook. The goal is to learn to live our lives as Jesus would live them if he were us. But we've neglected his ongoing role as our teacher. We are satisfied to check off the box of faith as a decision once made. Now we can press ahead with the business of life. So we think to ourselves, I'm a Christian. I've been trained for ministry. Now is the time to stop learning and get busy serving. But our rabbi still has much to teach us. And what he especially wants us to learn is his own character of gentleness and humility. Learn from me, he says, for I am gentle and humble in heart. Gentleness and humility, gentleness and humility, over and over again. Gentleness with yourself, gentleness with your spouse and your children, Gentleness with the church and with your neighbors. Gentleness with your critics, for they shall not be few. And humility, not thinking more highly of yourself than you ought to think, as Paul would say, but rather having the mind of Christ who thought of himself as a servant. In seminary, you have learned some of the tools of the ministry trade. You have learned about visionary leadership, about missional ministry, about exegeting scripture, about contextualizing the gospel. But now the teacher wants you to learn gentleness and humility. But the teacher knows that without humility, Without the lesson of the cross, without getting his heart into your heart, you will crash and burn. 
All those who put faith in the Messiah are automatically enrolled and given a full tuition scholarship for life. This is why I said that graduation is not really a good idea. We have learned in seminary that the church lives between the already and the not yet of salvation, between the inauguration of the kingdom and its consummation. That same dynamic is at play in each of our lives. Already we are followers of the Christ, but not yet have we been fully conformed to his image. Already we have been enrolled in the school of the Messiah, but not yet are we ready to graduate. And we will not be ready in this life. We must commit to being lifelong learners. The learning we are talking about is difficult because it is soul learning. It is about inviting the light of the world to shine into the dark recesses of our hearts, to allow the sword of the Spirit to sever joints and marrow and to wound us in order that we may be healed. To prosper in the school of the Messiah is to walk perpetually in the way of repentance. From the days of John the Baptist, the presence of the kingdom has always been announced with the command, repent, turn back, return to the Lord, Repentance is not a one-time event. I used to think it was. It is a process of continual realignment in which we understand how slow and stubborn we are in learning the Christ life. Sin must cease for us to be theoretical, friends. It is not merely the problem of others that we preach and teach against. It is our problem, here and now, today. Martin Luther had it right in the first of the 95 Theses. He says, when our Lord and Master Jesus Christ said repent, he intended that the whole life of believers should be one of repentance. In the practice of repentance, we find one of the strongest antidotes to the mortal sin of pride. It is hard to be proud of our progress or achievements if we honestly embrace the words of the old hymn, prone to wander, Lord, I feel it, prone to leave the God I love. Repentance in the school of the Messiah breeds gentleness with others and humility before God, precisely what the master wants us to learn. Of course, gentleness and humility are wonderful qualities and of great value for kingdom people, but they are not the only items in the curriculum. You are to learn the Messiah, all the beauty and integrity of the man from heaven, the last Adam, the true image of God, so every day will be filled with new opportunities and challenges for growing in Christ likeness. To do that, you must cultivate awareness. You must pay attention to the teacher. You will find that even the little incidents that we so easily dismiss will become teachable moments. And so my friends, I encourage you not to think of yourselves as graduates. The great lessons that King Jesus wants to teach you will take a lifetime of diligent study. But be encouraged. His yoke is easy, his burden is light, and you will find rest for your souls.